operator. Well, could you help me place this call? Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue doing these reviews, so thanks. Today we're going to look at my second fountain pen from Twisby. Twisby is a very popular brand from Taiwan. Over the years I've had many viewers recommend a Twisby to me. And I even went to my local brick and mortar pen shop, Reed Stationers in Calgary, and tried out the range of models from Twisby, from the Echo through the Diamond 580 and the VAC 700. In my hands, the Echo felt much too cheap for the asking price. I was also put off by both the 580 and the VAC 700's retail prices. I did see a Twisby model at a Canadian online pen retailer that I had not heard of before, and that was the Twisby Classic, which has a solid colored barrel and section and is a piston filler. I purchased one and you can see the link to my review in the description. I decided to take advantage of a 15% off coupon that I had from Applebaum for doing a review on their site and bought two pens, a Visconti Mirage and this Twisby Diamond 580 in smoke gray with rose gold trim. The pen is very handsome indeed and the price with the discount was reasonable. Is the Twisby all it's cracked up to be? No pun intended. Let's find out right now. <laughs> So this package took quite a while to get to me. I ordered this on February 12th, 2021, and today is April 16th. So a total of uh, 63 days. So those of you that are complaining about uh, the slow boat from China, Beginning to think those vodka cranberries may have had alcohol in them. Things from other places in the world take some time as well. So I bought two pens and I got free shipping for that, but still had to pay the back end DHL charges. But I'm assuming this bigger one is a Visconti. And this smaller one is a Twisby. Now, this would be my second Twisby. Uh, this is, uh, well, let's open it and find out what it is. And that tape is open because Annabelle opened this pen and tested it for me. We have some foam. Some Twisby documentation on the piston filler, a little note on the AL mechanism, and the case. Surrounded by foam. There is the seal. And the couple of plastic tie downs here. And there's the pen. And there should be more inside here. There should be a wrench inside here. There we go. And on the underside is a Twisby wrench and some silicone grease. And here we have the pen. My first Twisby was a Twisby Classic. And uh, I decided to go for this uh, Twisby 580 because I feel it's one of the more substantial Twisbys. The finials are nicer and the capacity of this piston filler is quite substantial and I wanted to compare it uh, to some of my other piston fillers. So, I will find an ink for this. I think I have an idea of the ink for this. And we shall do a review and on. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like 
and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The Twisby Diamond 580 comes in a number of flavors. Bobby, thanks for inviting me for ice cream. No, it's no problem. It's my guilty pleasure. I like ice cream. I love ice cream. <laughs> Would you do me a favor and read to me from the flavor list? Here we got. Here we got. Uh... <laughs> Banana ramen ding dong fudge. There's too much to choose from. There's a lot of lot of different choices. It's a lot of... My head's starting to spin. There's a lot of choices. I don't know what's going on here. Bob. <laughs> this is going to take longer than I thought. It'll take a long time. <laughs> the original Diamond 580 has a plastic grip section, and the piston assembly has plastic parts. The Diamond 580 AL replaces the plastic grip section and the piston parts with aluminum. The Diamond 580 ALR is the same as the AL, but the aluminum pieces are anodized and have a bit of texture to them. This is a new version of the original 580, the 580 RG2, with rose gold trim, rose gold nib, and rose gold aluminum piston sections, but a smoky gray cap and end cap and section. Essentially, they're all the same pen design. It's a piston filler demonstrator made of injection molded plastic. Overall, the pen is a good size, and with the RG2's features, I think it's a striking looking pen. I wasn't impressed by the clear demonstrator original, and I don't like metal sections, so when this model came out, it piqued my interest. From the top, we see the Twisby logo in shiny gold on a red background, and it's all under a dome of clear plastic. It's a big step up from what I think is a horribly cheap looking Cap Finial logo on the Echo. That's, you know, coming along. I'm working with a vocal coach. This is very nice and classy, other than the fact that it looks like the international biohazard warning. <laughs> there is a tapering rose gold plated end finial holding the logo and the clip in place. And the clip is nicely shaped and very springy and usable. However, if you look closely, it seems that the plating is rather rough on the clip and other parts of the pen. It has kind of a pitted texture to it. I keep trying to polish it with my jeweler's polish cloth uh, to get it shine up, but it always has that sort of rough, pitted kind of texture to it. I don't know what it is. The translucent gray injection molded plastic cap curves up to a large rose gold cap band that has two grooves and Twisby Diamond 580 RG2 and Taiwan laser etched on it. There's a good step down to the barrel which tapers up slightly to here and then is straight to a curved gold metal ring that separates the barrel from the end cap piston knob. The end cap is also in the translucent gray plastic and tapers down to a slightly curved bottom where you can see the remnant of the injection molding gate right there. The barrel is textured with triangular facets which alternate directions top to bottom and bottom to top, giving the barrel a lovely diamond pattern, hence the name. It's one of the nicest features of this pen and gives it some flash and sparkle when you rotate it in your hand. Of course, being transparent plastic, it also shows off the ink inside the pen, which is both a lovely visual and very practical. The cap unscrews with one and about an eighth turn to reveal a tapering plastic section and a thick rose gold ring, which tapers up slightly. And then we see the number five size rose gold plated steel nib. The nib is nicely shaped and has some angled scroll work. Then the Twisby logo, Twisby, and a B for broad. And there's the black plastic feed. The nib is part of a nib unit which unscrews very easily for maintenance and swapping. 
The section is nicely shaped and a good size, but these threads and the step down from the barrel are slightly bumpy, not sharp, but bumpy and present. There's also a silicone o-ring right here to help with the cap seal. The inside of the cap shows a cap liner, which is also a smoky gray plastic. The cap does not post in any practical way at all. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand and very balanced and plenty long enough. I do feel those threads and the step down, however, but if you hold your pen closer to the nib like this, you won't feel them. Or if you hold it up higher as well, you won't feel them. And that's fine as well. I bought this pen from Apple Bomb for $83.35 US with free shipping. And that represented a 15% discount from the list price. And I got that 15% for writing a review of my previous purchase on Apple Bomb's website. You can get 15% off by doing the same thing. It's really easy. To get 10% for your first purchase, just use the code FRIEND, F-R-I-E-N-D, when you check out. Before we look at some size comparisons, I want to show you a bit of video I did when I re-inked the pen. I filled it with J. Urbain Stormy Gray to begin with, an ink with some shimmering gold particles in it, and I had some flow issues right off the bat. So I cleaned the pen out and refilled it with a very well-behaved ink, Hiroshizuku Kanpeki and took the opportunity to show how to disassemble the Twisby Diamond 580. So here is my Twisby Diamond 580 and I had inked this pen up with J. Urbain Stormy Gray which has a really nice gold shimmer to it and I figured with this broad nib it will show that shimmer. It certainly does and I did a writing sample when it first came out of the box and here it is and you can see there's lots of shimmer there but I ran into a problem it started writing okay and very very wet very thick of course it's abroad but then I started getting this some kind of flow issues and then it sort of let up and blobbed out of the nib and I got this great big blob here and then it became like a fire hose I wrote my journal with it last night it was just too wet uh, to write with. So I cleaned the pen out and while I was cleaning the pen out I thought well I might as well uh, do a disassembly video for the uh, Twisby 580. I had to take it apart anyway so just grab this part and unscrew the section and the little sleeve comes off of there and then this little ring comes off of there and then you have your nib unit and you can get a replacement nib unit and then instead of putting a shimmering ink which might cause flow issues let's put an ink in it that I know behaves very well and that's the Hiroshizuku Kanpeki for me most Hiroshizuku inks are well behaved and I'll put that collar back on there put the section sleeve back on and I had also added some silicone grease to these threads right here to make sure there is no air leaks there and put that section back on and then to take the piston part apart you open it up take your Twisby wrench and it's a reverse thread so you're going to turn the barrel towards you that and then that whole thing pulls right out and I put silicone grease on the piston cleaned out the barrel any moisture and we put the piston back in and we turn the barrel the opposite way make it snug without over tightening and now I think I'm ready to Fill this pen up and we'll try the pen again. And then turn the piston so that it pushes some of that air out of there. We'd 
bubbling through the feed. There, we got solid ink back down into the ink. And we get, get a pretty good fill, very full fill. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Twisby Diamond 580 RG2 with a Twisby Classic piston filler, a Pelican M800 piston filler, a Pen BBS 309 piston filler, and a Wingsung 3008 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the 580 is the only one of the group that really doesn't post. Well, that's a bit of a lie because the Twisby Classic doesn't post either. This thing just doesn't doesn't stay on. I've heard some owners say that theirs stay on. This one doesn't. The Pelican M800 is the best poster of the group. The Pen BBS 309 posts well, but it does backweight the pen a little bit, where the Pelican is just outstanding in balance, both posted and unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Twisby Diamond 580RG2. And it has a broad number five steel nib. Let's check the wetness. You can see this is still a very, very wet pen. I did a little tweaking with the nib by scissoring the tines a bit to reduce the flow. It is better, but this is a gusher of a broad pen. nib is ultra smooth. Very, very nice. And the ink is Hiroshizuku on Pecky. And here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. It's probably my very favorite teal ink. As to line variation, this is a very stiff nib and I don't want to press it again, but there's already, this pen is already broad. So there's no place for it to go. So there's not a lot of line variation you're going to get out of it. The line itself is 0.7 millimeters, which is a Western medium to broad and a Japanese broad. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing. It's a little bit scratchy, but it actually makes a thinner line. And the feed is keeping up. And some quick writing. A 
I don't think this feed will ever have any difficulty keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, it is very attractive with the smoky gray cap, section and piston knob, and the faceted barrel that shimmers and sparkles in the light and the ink sloshing around inside there. It's a very, very uh, beautiful pen. The pen fits well in the hand. It's nicely, the section is nicely shaped and sized and the nib is very smooth and wet. The clip is very attractive and functional. You can take the entire pen apart very easily for maintenance as I demonstrated and it comes with this really cool tool and some silicone grease for that purpose. The nib units are easily swappable. The ink capacity is terrific and the piston works beautifully. I do have a few issues with the 580 however. It doesn't post in any practical way at all. The threads and the step there are bumpy and can get in my way. The nib is small. A number six here would really improve this pen, I think. The plating is a bit suspect and seems to have a rough texture to it, no matter how much I polish it. And it seems a bit pricey for a injection molded plastic piston filler. For under $50, you can get a Pen BBS 456, which is turned acrylic, has a number six size nib, posts beautifully, and has a huge ink capacity. Of course, it is a vacuum filler. But if you must have a piston filler, the Pen BBS 309 is turned acrylic, has a number six size nib, and holds a ton of ink and is under $30. Even the lowly Wingsung 3008, which is an unabashed Twisby 580 near copy, posts securely. It's long, yes, but it even has a longer and smoother section than the Twisby. The nibs are awful, of course, in my opinion, but you can put a Lamy nib on that if you like. Gorlami? Gorlami. Gorlami. It even has this little click, turn on, shut off, safety valve for your piston so it doesn't uh, inject ink on you accidentally. As it is though, this is the best looking Twisby 580 of the series, in my opinion. It's fact. And that is your opinion. <laughs> I forgive you, let's go home. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. And that's all she wrote. I made this.